I was being told that's the most important game of the day. And I don't even remember what I saw out there because so much has happened since then. Yeah. So oh, there's so many layers to this. And 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 by the way, for the for those that hit me up on social media saying we can't wait for fine bomb and you to break it down. Well, here it is, because this is the Sunday we've been waiting for. Uh part one. Well, first of all, let's I'm gonna start with the most recent thing you said. Texas AM Missouri was an embarrassment for Missouri. Their non-conference schedule came up and bit them yesterday, and Mike Elko completely outclassed them. We'll break down that game in a minute. But, yes, that was supposed to be billed as the biggest game. It was the biggest laugher of the biggest games. So we'll, we'll, we'll touch on that in a minute. I came on this show. I came on your show. I went on SportsCenter. I said it on SportsCenter with you. I said that Kalen DeBoer was able to put closure to the Nick Saban era based on what he did against Georgia. And we thought that that was going to be legit because of how they won that game. Then yesterday happened, and I swear, Paul, it was almost as if you were sitting on set with us last night. I look at Dan Mullen and Joey Galloway. I said, here is Kalen DeBoer's biggest thing Sunday morning. Nick Saban would have had his team's attention after beating Georgia the way they did and baiting them to think Vanderbilt could beat them. He'd have been like, you're going to get beat by Vanderbilt. Now, DeBoer's got to explain how you go from the highest of highs, beating the class of the SEC in Georgia, to going to Nashville and losing to the de- team that's been the doormat for their existence in the conference. And that's the biggest... This Paul, this isn't like they lost to Georgia and they went to Columbia and lost to South Carolina. Still stunning, maybe explainable. This one's tough because we've now seen the swing of the pendulum, the highest of highs and now the lowest of lows for Alabama football. Yeah. And and, I mean, there have been bigger upsets in college football history. I would point to Jim Harbaugh and Stanford beating a number two USC, but even Stanford at the time wasn't a great power, but it had had moments. But when you talk about college football and you mentioned Vanderbilt, you immediately get a laugh. I mean, it is it is like, remember, uh, you were, you're too young to even know, but back, you know, in the 70s and 80s, it was like, oh, you got slippery rock for homecoming. Now it's Vanderbilt. And even though we both know what's going on there, it's they, they always find a way to blow it. And so this time it didn't happen. And it just seemed surreal. Uh, and it reminded me a little bit. I covered that Vanderbilt game 40 years ago when Ray Perkins was a coach, and it felt very similar. That was a that was two years after Bryant, and suddenly nothing felt right at Alabama again. And I'm not, I'm not saying that this morning because I know what I said last week, and everyone knows it because it's been shown a million times. But there were old line Alabama fans that just didn't quite buy it, but it was because of the collapse at the end of the in the second half, yeah. and that yeah. came back yesterday. And in Kalen DeBoer, I'm going to take you through his week. Uh, he, he He's calm. He's cool. He came on our show Wednesday. And we went back and talked about the Georgia game. Can you imagine trying to get Nick Saban four days after uh, a, a major win to say, Coach, I know you got Vanderbilt. Let's go back and talk. He would have, he would have bitten. He, first of all, he wouldn't have done the interview. Right. Uh, and then I'm watching SportsCenter uh, Thursday night. There's Jalen Milrow. I mean, that did not happen under Nick Saban for a reason, Matt. Right. Uh, and, and I think what's what we're going to hear is this program's a little bit too loose, uh, whether it's NIL. I don't really know what it is. I liked it until I didn't like it Saturday afternoon. Well, Alabama fans aren't going to like it. And – Again, for Kalen DeBoer, <clears throat> pardon me, Kalen DeBoer and the emotions, think about this. <clears throat> you go from, again, hey, we got the guy <clears throat> replacing Nick Saban. We're good, we're good, we're good. Now he's about to really understand what that Alabama job is all about. He is about, he, he's waking up this morning going, oh, hell, I just lost to Vanderbilt. And my team over the last six quarters has given up 67 points. There have been seasons where Nick Saban's defense, I believe it was 2011, yeah. they gave up. 106 points or something like that the entire year and so where you were the toast to tuscaloosa last week i mean life comes at you fast in the sec i never thought it was going to be vanderbilt but he's really about to understand that this isn't seattle anymore and i think he's going to be fine but this is an early wake-up call with a team that's loaded with talent that they're going to have to get it right quick and maybe this is that shift in point How- 